Welcome back everybody, MC here with another video and today I want to show you guys how to make a crimson biome in a corruption world and this works for the opposite as well, you can also make a corruption biome in a crimson world. First thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to be in hard mode for this and you want to make a graveyard mini biome. To do that you need to put down 7 or 8 gravestones until smoke starts to form in the area. You're going to want to have the dryad in the house that you're building the graveyard around because she is the key to this and you're just going to want to put these down and go to the dryad and collect the corruption seeds or the crimson seeds depending on which way you are doing this. They're quite cheap so buy a lot of them. It actually takes a lot of corruption blocks and a lot of crimson blocks to make a biome so make sure you get plenty of these. Just keep adding them until you see the corruption or crimson enemies spawning, depending on which one you're trying to make. I usually isolate a grass, a grass biome for this, and the grass biome to isolate it, as I said, is to put pretty much a six to seven block hole. All, I usually go all the way down to hell on either side of the isolated block, and then you have your natural normal grass on top. If you want to see how to isolate areas from corruption or crimson make sure you check out our corruption crimson video on that topic so we're going to put these crimson seeds into the grass and the grass is going to start turning red we want to have a lot of blocks or a lot of crimson grass on the screen at the same time which means it's not going to be just enough to put it on the surface. We're going to have to really dig it into the area. It's going to take time for this to start spreading as well. If you're in a rush, you can take some steps to speed it up, but I would recommend starting your crimson, then going away and doing something else for a while, maybe a few bosses or maybe some grinding some items, and then come back and the crimson will, will have spread in this block even further. And the, the Pretty much the more crimson seeds you put in, the more deep it will have grabbed it and the quicker it will turn into a crimson biome. So we're going to skip ahead a little bit here and as you can see, we're starting to get some crimson going where the grass is starting to spread itself. Usually what I like to do is I like to put some dirt blocks in and add, after adding the dirt blocks, adding some crimson seeds to those dirt blocks. So just to be clear, it's dirt blocks that turn to crimson and obviously grass can be turned into crimson grass, but it is mostly dirt blocks that you're going to be using for this. And we're just going to use the crimson on these. Once the crimson enemies start spawning, that's when you know that you have your crimson biome started and that we have some spawning off screen as we speak. So that means our crimson biome has begun. When it comes to the Brain of Cthulhu, if you're trying to kill, the, if you're using the Crimson Biome to kill Brain of Cthulhu in your corruption world, you're going to need some vertebrae and you're going to need some vicious powder, I believe it's called. And to create that, you're going to need the vertebrae itself, obviously, and you're going to need vicious mushroom in order to pretty much create the um, spawner for Brain of Cthulhu. To get those mushrooms, you're going to need to wait until they start growing on your crimson grass. Now, they take ages. This could take you a long time to get. So I would highly recommend just taking your time and waiting for the crimson or the vicious mushrooms to start spawning. The reason why I'm putting a graveyard here again is because graveyards increase spawn rate in the area and we are looking for vertebrae, as many vertebrae as possible. And because of that, we want to have as many enemies as possible. Unfortunately, it's not a 100% drop rate, which means it's going to take a while to get those too. You are really looking at a bit of a grind here to get the vicious mushrooms and to get the vertebrae in order to spawn the Brain of Cthulhu. As I said, technically unnaturally in the world that you're in. And if you use water candles and battle potions, it increases the spawn as well. And luckily enough, we have a blood moon as well in this uh, world coming up. So we're going to have even more spawn. But it still took ages to get the two items that I needed to spawn the Brain of Cthulhu. And there we go. We have the blood moon graveyard 
water candle. I'm, I don't have a battle potion activated, but you should really look into getting an, a battle potion activated for these. Then we are going to double check that we have everything. We have enough of the mushrooms to make the vicious powder, or we don't have enough, but we're, we know that that's what we're looking for uh, since we have two uh, already. And then we have the vertebrates as well, which is going to go together. When it comes to making the spawner for the Brain of Cthulhu, we need to go to one of the altars, which don't forget, don't spawn in your your crimson uh, biome that you've created yourself. So you'll have to go to the corruption to get one of those altars. And now we have the spawner for Brain of Cthulhu. A lot of the stuff that you would normally get from a natural crimson world, you can't really get those in your naturally or your unnaturally created uh, corruption biome or crimson biome. So you have to really grind for them and get them yourself. Now, obviously, Brainy Cthulhu and Hardwood is easy peasy. But first of all, we're just fighting it. And second of all, we're looking for the Brainy Cthulhu's items. And also the fact that it will literally drop all of the crimson stuff that you want. So that's pretty handy as well. But I mean, at the end of the day, at at this point of the game, I don't really need anything apart from his accessory that he gives you, which is, in my opinion, actually better than the worm scarf in the current patch. So it's quite useful. But yeah, that's it for today's video, I guess. Thank you very much for watching and let me know what you think of it. Let me know how you create your crimson biome in your corruption world and vice versa. Let me know if there's anything else that you do as well. And if you have any questions, make sure you ask because I'll be in the comment section making sure to answer them. And yeah, have fun with your crimson biome in your corruption or vice versa. Thank you very much for watching and ta-ta!